In this video, we're going to show how to brew and age wine under water. There are various stages to this project. The first stage is to mix the ingredients. The ingredients you need to make wine is basically grapefruit juice, yeast, and if needed, additional glucose in the form of sugar. So we basically have 100% grape juice that we're adding to a larger container. In this case, it's a five gallon water jug, which we're gonna be doing our brewing operation in. Grape juice typically contains a sugar content already. However, we're gonna add some additional sugar to boost the alcohol content of our brewed wine. In this batch of wine, we're adding approximately one pound of sugar per gallon of grape juice. So we swirl this to make sure that we dissolve the sugar within the grape juice. Since we're going to attempt to brew our wine under water, the brewing container is held within a frame. The purpose of the frame is to secure the top on the container and prevent the lake, the water, from contaminating the wine. The next phase is to actually brew the wine under water. So to do this, first off, we add the yeast or active yeast to the container. So we're syringing this in through one of the connections on top. That's good. Boy, it's definitely going in. And we identified that we had to make some last minute modifications to the vessel as the airlock was leaking at one of the connections before the siphon. So when we dive down with the vessel, we maintain a positive pressure in the vessel by emitting a small amount of air into the vessel and it bubbled out through the airlock. We found a location around 20 meters under the water where the vessel was secured by a rope to a metal post. Then after one and a half weeks, we return to collect the vessel. So after one and a half weeks, there's still a little bit of brewing taking place. We can see some bubbles being emitted. Unfortunately for one of the connections that we tried to repair, but it appears that no water got into the vessel as it still has plenty of air space within the container. So we didn't contaminate our wine. It's still brewing, but we're gonna extract it and finish the brewing topside. As there are no decompression tables for wine, it was interesting to note when we were bringing the wine up, when we got to around 10 to 3 meters from the surface, it really started bubbling like crazy, as all that dissolved carbon dioxide within the wine starts bubbling out, as it tries to reach an equilibrium pressure with the surroundings as we were reducing the pressure. Effectively, this is like champagne. We're opening the cork. And then we get on the surface, we can still see it's frothing, it's bubbling like crazy. Most of this carbon dioxide is dissolved carbon dioxide within the wine. So after the wine finished fermenting, the next phase is to bottle the wine. So we transferred the wine from our fermentation container into a settling container. So to do this, we can use some of the ports that we installed in our fermentation container. So we put a little bit of positive pressure on one to push out the wine through a siphon into the other. After settling it, sterilizing our wine bottles, and of course the siphon, it's time to siphon out the wine into the bottles. So we start the siphon and we start filling our bottles. After we have our wine in a bottle, the next phase is to put the bottle cork in. So we use a corking contraption. And in goes the cork, sealing the wine in the bottle. So to try and help keep the integrity of the cork, we're gonna put a wax seal on the top. 
So to do this we have a little burner and we're melting some hot glue sticks and some crayons. And this will be the seal that we're going to place on the top of the bottle. So after a short while, the wax and hot glue melt. So to apply the wax seal to the top of the bottle, the neck of the bottle is submerged in the hot wax. As we lift it out from the hot wax, we rotate the bottle as the wax solidifies to form the seal. So hopefully this will give a little bit more integrity to the wine bottles. So the next phase is to basically take the wine that we fermented under the water, we brought back up to the surface, we've bottled, and now we're going to take those bottles and put them back under the water in an attempt to age the wine in the perfect temperature, the perfect pressure conditions to form the most desirable wine ever. So in order to store this wine under the water, various secret locations were chosen in order to deposit these bottles. When depositing in these, the visibility wasn't the best. Now the next phase is to collect the wine bottles from under the water. So after a period of many months, from some of the secret locations, the visibility actually improved a little bit. And now we can recover some of the bottles. So it looks like there's still an airspace within the bottle. So again, we've managed to avoid the lake entering the wine. And at the base of this bottle, it appears that some zebra mussels have colonized it and have made it their home, although be it temporary home. And finally, the all important taste test. What does this wine taste like? I'm no wine expert, but it tastes like a very dry red wine. So if you want to have a chance at winning one of these legendary bottles of wine, which was brewed underwater, bottled on the surface, then the bottles were stored under the water before bringing them back up to the surface, then please go ahead and leave a comment in the comments section. At the end of 2024, I will pick one person at random. As long as they're a legal age, I will ship them the bottle of wine. And as always, please subscribe. Thanks for watching and cheers.